And tonight, killer whales kept in captivity. Tourists love to see them jump through the hoops and leap out of the water. But tonight, ABC's Lindsay Davis tells us about a new documentary that re-examines the terrible tragedy that killed a trainer at SeaWorld and has raised new questions about these gentle creatures in captivity. A seemingly playful scene that turns deadly in an instant. Three years ago, Tilikum, a 12,000-pound, 22-foot-long killer whale, killed 40-year-old SeaWorld trainer Don Brancho. His story is now the subject of a new documentary called Blackfish. I didn't understand why a killer whale would essentially bite the hand that feeds it. In her documentary, Gabriella Copperthwaite questions, should killer whales be held in captivity? Is it true that killer whales have never been responsible for loss of life in the wild? This is true. There's no um, documented case of a killer whale ever killing uh, anybody in the wild. It's only in captivity. Copperthwaite goes back 40 years when the first killer whales were captured for marine parks. They had speed boats, they had bombs they were throwing in the water. They herd the whales into coves. Tilikum was about two years old when he was captured off the coast of Iceland in 1983 by an Atlantic hunter. A year later, he was shipped to a Canadian marine park where he and two other killer whales were kept at night in a holding pen just 20 feet wide and 30 feet deep. Closing that door on him and knowing that he's locked in there for the whole night is like... It's a staff. It's a... Whoa. During Tillicum's 30 years in captivity, he's been associated with three of the four deaths involving killer whales in parks. SeaWorld says since 2010, the company has voluntarily implemented significant changes to the training protocol for its killer whale program that have proven to be safe and effective. While all killer whales are now separated from trainers and shows, Tillicum remains at SeaWorld as the search for answers continues. Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Again, Lindsay Davis reporting on a new documentary.